All glory and honor and praise to the Most High. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom Aleichem. Peace be unto you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, one God. Today's uh, verse of the day is different from the scripture reading of today. The verse of the day, we're coming out of uh, 1 Peter. The scripture of the day, we're coming out of Romans. And we'll start off... Uh, with the psalm reading first. Amen. Coming out of Psalms 145. This is a psalm of David. David praises God for his fame. Amen. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall, shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty, and of thy wondrous works, and men shall speak of the might of of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness, and shall bring of thy righteousness, and shall sing of thy righteousness. Verse 8. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The Lord upholdeth all that fall, and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand, and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. Psalm 145 verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him, and he also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak thy praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 146, trust in God alone. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth. He returneth to his earth and that very day his thoughts perish happy is he that hath the god of jacob for his help whose hope is in the lord his god which made heaven and earth the sea and all that therein is which keepeth truth forever which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry, the Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord 
openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow, but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations, praise ye the Lord. Psalm 147. Amen. Worship and trust the Lord. Amen. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is calmly. Amen. The Lord doeth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meek, he casteth the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises unto the harp, upon the harp unto our God. Psalm 147, 7. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God. Who covereth the heaven with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth to the beast his food and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him and those that hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. For he hath strengthened the bars of the gates. He hath blessed thy children within thee. Amen. He maketh, verse 14, Psalm 147, 14. He maketh peace in thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hard frost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. His can stand who can stand before his cold? Who can stand before the Lord's cold? Amen. Verse 18. He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth his wind to blow and the waters flow. He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as far and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Psalm 148, let all creation praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his host. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the heaven. Excuse me. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps. 
fire and hell, snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beast and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people and princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalteth the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Psalm 149. Let all the saints praise the Lord. This is the Sabbath. Remember it and keep it holy. That's a commandment. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen. All this heathenism. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written this honor have all his saints praise ye the lord amen psalms 150 in closing praise the lord praise ye the lord praise god in his sanctuary Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing unto the reading of his word. Now we want to open up with prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, holy be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive those who trespass against us as we trespass against them. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dying the glory, dying the power, dying the honor forever and ever. Amen. Now we will move right along to the verse of the day. Now turn with me in your holy Bibles. And we will go right into the Holy Apostle, St. Peter. Amen. When you have it, say amen. Amen. And amen and amen. The verse of the day is 1 Peter 3.18. For Christ also hath once 
suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, first Peter three eighteen. First Peter three eighteen. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the spirit. Have you seen that? that now that's, that's uh, very serious. That he might bring us to God means in order that Christ might bring us to or give us access to God. Since Christ has opened up the way to God, there is no longer the need of a priesthood. You see that? Rather, each individual believer in himself is a priest. You see that? Each believer, because we are, we are a royal priesthood. We are a peculiar people. Amen? Amen? First Peter 2 9 says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Every believer has the privilege and responsibility of direct access to God through Jesus Christ. You see that in the Old Testament. The family of Aaron was designed as a priesthood to God. In the New Testament, the priesthood becomes the birthright of every Christian believer. Have you seen it? It's our birthright. Like the Old Testament. Counterparts, believer priests have the privilege of access to God. They were the only ones. But now every Christian has this access, has this privilege. With privilege comes a twofold responsibility. Sacrifice and intercessory prayer. The sacrifice of the believer are his body. Romans 12, 1. For the sacrifices of God. It talks about that. Present your body as a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable, for this is your reasonable service. So that's what he, the, the, the Lord wants us to present ourselves as a sacrifice now. By being obedient unto him. Even through fasting and prayer and studying the scripture. Amen. Amen. This sacrifice of every believer is his body, his praise to God, his substance, and his service, as you see in Hebrews 13, 6. The Christian ought also to pray on behalf of others. So we have to pray for others. That's an important part of the Christian life is praying for others, even your enemies. You must pray for your enemies. Amen. So Christ, you see, the verse of the day says, for Christ also hath once suffered for sins. How did Christ suffer for sins? Because he was crucified. He bared our transgressions upon his shoulders. Our sins our sins were uh, uh, given all to him as the as the one who will bear them. He is our sin bearer. You see that? Christ was the willing sacrifice. 
Christ is, is the Lamb of God because he is the willing sacrifice. He's God's sacrifice. You see, God sacrificed his own son. God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That was the sacrifice. That whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Just as Abraham was going to give his only son at the time as a sacrifice. And the angel of the Lord called from heaven twice. The angel of the Lord was the Lord Jesus Christ. That was a Christophany of Christ. That was the second person of the Godhead. The second person of the Holy Trinity. That's why he called out twice from heaven. Abram, Abraham. Abram, Abram. He stopped him. That was Christ. The fullness of the Godhead. The word of God. So Christ suffered for sins. By his stripes we are healed. As it says in Isaiah chapter 53. That he will bear our sins. He will bear our transgressions. He is our sin bearer. So for Christ, so this was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah that Christ will be crucified and that he will bear the sins of many and that our stripes will be healed by his lashes. No man was marred more than Christ during his crucifixion. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. So the just and the unjust that he might bring us to God is only through Christ that we can come to God because he is the sin bearer. He paid the price. He purchased us with his blood. So we can only go to God through Christ. That's why he says no man may get to the father, but through the son. He said, I am the truth, the way and the life. That he might bring us to God. So Christ is the mediator of man. There is one God and one mediator between man and God, and that man is Christ Jesus. Although Christ is also God, he's the incarnation of the invisible God. He's the manifestation. He's God incarnate. He's God in the flesh. He is God. He's the everlasting father. He's the mighty God. He's the one that will judge. We have to go in the judgment seat of Christ. We have to go before his throne. He has kingdoms that was given to him by his father. He is the word of God. When God talks, just know that that's Christ. He's the word. He's the word of God. He's the fullness of the Godhead. Amen. So being put to death in the flesh as he incarnated into the physical came from his glorious abode. The glory that he had with the father before the foundation of the world that he talks about in John 17. Amen. This glory. He comes into the physical, into the, our realm of force and nature. The fourth abode. And came into this world. To master and conquer death and sin and take you know, and when he died, he went into hell and took the keys of death and hell from Lucifer, from Satan, from the fallen angel. So now all, all, all principalities is under his authority. On every realm. In every abode. His name is above every name. Every tongue shall confess. All eyes shall see. Every knee shall bow. Unto Christ, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. It was the spirit of God that rose him back up from the dead after three days. While he was doing work in the spiritual realm, crossed over to the other side, then the spirit quickened him back into his body and that spirit came back into the body. So when the disciples saw him, they thought they saw a ghost. But he said, do you see a ghost have flesh and bone as you see me have? He asked for fish in a honeycomb. And, and, and Thomas put his finger through the holes. In the hands of Christ. And that was the only reason he believed Thomas was the doubter. He was called Didymus. Thomas Didymus. So for Christ. Suffered, amen. He suffered for sins that he might be our sin bearer, and now he is in his glorious 
holy of holies. You see? Amen. Christ's descent into Hades took place when he went and preached unto the spirits. Christ preached to spirits in hell. In a whole spiritual realm, not even in the physical realm. He was preaching the gospel in hell. Jesus Christ preached the gospel in hell. Do you understand that? He went and preached unto the spirits. You understand that? And this is verse 19, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. So all those people that died during the flood of Noah, Christ went and preached unto them and brought them into the holy city. And this was in the spiritual realm. Christ was preaching the gospel in the spiritual realm and in the physical realm. He went and preached unto the spirits. These were the lost souls in hell. The ones who had rejected God. The immediate mention of Noah would indicate that these spirits. Be understood as the souls of those who heard and rejected Noah's preaching. You see that? Since they were the largest group of mankind ever to experience the universal judgment of God at one time. This preaching was the announcement of his triumph on the cross, which sealed the fate of these doomed souls. So Christ was preaching to souls in hell in the spiritual realm about his resurrection from the cross. How he had died and was going to rise again and go back into the body that died. Being quickened by the spirit. Amen. I, I hope you're with me this morning. Don't fall asleep on me, children. Though Jesus has imparted wisdom to millions of his followers. Through his word, it is sometimes worth remembering that his ultimate lesson was that of his suffering and sacrifice upon the cross. Through him, God brought forth his covenant with man to purge our sins in his blood. Amen. Amen. So we're going to close out this particular verse and move on to the next lesson with a prayer all hearts and minds towards heaven the father of heaven who gave his only begotten son I thank you for your sacrifice may we praise the name of Christ in the highest for dying upon the cross to give us the gift of grace and freedom may the unjust be cleansed and upon the cross our souls be forgiven May the blood you shed not be in vain, but be always with us as the rising sun shining down on all man, the message of salvation. Amen. So now we will turn and we will go into Romans coming out of chapter five. When you have it, say amen. Amen. So we're dealing with the sin through Adam and salvation through Christ. Amen. So let's read from verses 1 through 12 and then we'll pause at 12. Results of justification, Romans chapter 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Whew. Glory, hallelujah. Did you did you did you hear what the what the brother, the apostle, St. Paul said? Did, I, did you catch that? The Holy Ghost given. That's to every believer. The believer has the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. This is not a second blessing, but it's just a much a certitude as the believer's justification. You see that? Because we're justified by faith. And because we have been justified by faith, it was God's doing, not man's peace with God. This is not a feeling, but a standing. God and the believer are no longer at enmity, but have been reconciled through Christ Jesus, through the shedding of his precious blood. This is a primary result of our justification. Once he fulfilled the uh, 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 impossible mission, mission, the mission was possible through Christ because he willed to do his father's will. He said, Father, let this cup pass not by my will, but by your will. So he was all about his father's business and doing his father's will. He was totally unselfish. We can come directly into the presence of God only through Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is not only our redeemer, but he is also our advocate. The devil is our adversary. Christ is our advocate. And our redeemer, he redeemed us and he's still making intercession on our behalf. He sacrificed himself for us. He redeemed us to him and he also gave us salvation and is interceding on our behalf. By him, we gain entrance and acceptance before the father. First John 2, 1. Wherein we stand. This is the answer to the psalmist's question. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? And that's Psalms 130, verse 3. Rejoice. Literally, we boast. And hope denotes the absolute certainty the believer has of God's deliverance. Amen. And that's the faith. That we have. Verse 6. For we were yet with our. For, for when we were yet without strength. In due time. Christ died for the ungodly. That's the, that's the unjust. For when we were yet without strength. In due time. Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely. For a righteous man. Will one die? Yet per adventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Mm -mm -mm. Glory, hallelujah. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him, through Christ Jesus. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled when, excuse me, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Amen. 
by his blood, by his life, the death of Christ and his shed blood effect salvation. You see that? But the life of Christ sustains it. The reference is to the abiding results of Jesus' death and resurrection. Amen. Verse 11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. He is our atoner, as it talks about in Isaiah 53. Amen. So sin through Adam and salvation through Christ, as you know that maybe you don't, but Jesus Christ is also called the second Adam. So when The Rock came out with that movie called Black Adam and he had all these superpowers, that's really Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the black Adam or the second Adam. As Jesus Christ was a black man and the second Adam with the superpowers, the one who was able to overcome sin, the perfect man. Only Jesus Christ was perfect. No one else. Amen. Only Jesus Christ had those powers. No one else. Verse 12. But you know that Hollywood is going to flip everything around and, and do what they do with it. <clears throat> sin through Adam, salvation through Christ. Verse 12. And we'll, 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 we'll close right here and we'll come back to it. We'll, we'll come back in. We'll, we'll revisit this. We'll close out at verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. So we all sinned through Adam. And, and 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 this will this this chapter will actually carry on to verse 21. And in this passage, you know, Paul, the apostle, St. Paul, compares the imputation of Christ's righteousness with the imputation of Adam's sin. Just as Adam's sin results in a sinful race, the gift of grace through the righteous act of Christ results in a spiritual race. You see that you have the physical sinful race and you have the righteous spiritual race as we are a peculiar people, a holy generation, a royal priesthood. You see that? So just as Adam's sin resulted in a sinful race, this gift of grace through the righteous act of Christ Jesus results in a spiritual race and the principle of imputation that reduces all men to the same ultimate condition also provides for all men the same ultimate answer. The righteousness of Jesus Christ. By one man sin entered. Amen. The entry of sin into the world is traced to its human source from which all mankind came. All have sinned refers to a point in time when all sinned. It points to the moment when all were in one man, which is Adam. We were all in his genes. So when Adam sinned, we all sinned because we were in his semen. We were in his loins. He is the progenitor of the human race. Amen. So when he fell, the entire human race fell and was constituted as sinners. That's why we are all born in sin. And that's why you have to be reborn again, which is the baptism of Christ Jesus being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost going down and being submerged in water. This is the symbolic ritual of being reborn again. But accepting Jesus Christ as your personal savior will save you as well. But after you have accepted Christ as your personal savior, the next step is the baptism, which is the uh, which brings you into the spiritual race and being able to be called the sons of God. Amen. 
So, <clears throat> wherefore, as by one man sin, verse 12, Romans 5, 12, wherefore, as, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Amen. So Adam is the, you know, he's the headship of the human race. And with this headship of Adam or this leadership of, of Adam, Adam, the federal head of the human race, was also the seminal head. The word seminal is seed implies that everyone existed in seed form within Adam and that he was the head of the human race. We were all in the body of Adam when he sinned, just as Levi was in the body of Abraham when he met Melchizedek, Hebrews 7.10. In that sense, every member of the human race played a part in the fall of Adam or the fall of man. When Adam sinned, we were actually sinning with him. Adam was also the federal head of the race of sinners. In this sense, Adam's vote, Adam's vote for sin is similar to the vote of a representative in the legislator, Congress, or Senate who by his vote obligates his constitution for certain indebtedness. While Adam's disobedience results in the human race being plunged into sin, the obedience of Christ, the second Adam, gives Christians the power to overcome sin in their lives. Amen? And you can also refer to Genesis 2.24, but we're dealing with Romans. This is chapter 5, verses 12 through 21, but we're going to end at verse 12. But I'm just giving you the breakdown of this chapter. Now, we're dealing with imputed sin. We're still dealing with verse 12. The meaning of impute is to ascribe to or reckon. The imputation of sin occurred originally when the sin of Adam was charged to the account of every person, the imputation of sin is not arbitrarily charging people with sins for which they are not naturally responsible, but reckoning to them the guilty or the guilt, excuse me, they deserve. Imputation of sin is charged to all because we all are connected with Adam's race God not only imputes the sin of Adam to the race he also offers to do the same with the righteousness of Christ and you'll see that in verse 21 as you see at the end of the chapter that as sin hath reigned unto death even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord When God imputes the righteousness of Christ to the account of a believer, he makes the person's record as good or as perfect as Jesus Christ. Now, imputed righteousness is the only remedy for imputed sin. And that's why Christ was necessary for our redemption and recovery and reconciliation unto God. Amen. Also reference Jeremiah 3.23 and we'll close out with this verse and a prayer. Jeremiah 3.23 This is a confession of sin. If you begin at verse 20 and go to verse 23. It says, Surely as a wife treacherously departed from her husband, as many of these women are divorcing their husbands, so have ye treacherously with me, O, Is o house of Israel, saith the Lord. So he's saying the same way a wife, 
because we Israel is married to God and the church is married to Christ. So God technically has two wives. Israel is his first wife and the church is his second wife, right? Now, the same way a, a wife divorces her husband treacherously because God hates divorce. The same way that a woman will leave her husband for any little reason just to go be back into the world. This is the same way that God felt with us when we leave him and go a whoring after other gods or, or idolatry or whatever it is. You, you went away from God. You left his his statutes, his ordinances, his, his, his precepts, his ways, his commandments, his judgments, his laws. You see, you left those. So that's, his, that's the comparison. Verse 21, a voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplication of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way and they have forgotten the Lord, their God. They, they, they forgot, you know, they're forgetful people. Very, very forgetful. They left them. You forgot about me. You don't remember me no more. Verse 22. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. So you have time to repent. You have time to return from your backslidings and repent because Christ Jesus gave us grace and truth. He's full of grace and truth. So you, when you believe on him, you believe the truth. And, he, and, and through him, you have a grace period to repent before he comes back. Verse 23, truly in vain, this is the kicker, truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of the mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. Only in Christ Jesus is there any salvation. No man may get to the Father but through the Son. For Christ is the, the truth, the way, and the life. There is no way around that. Only, only th way to God is through Christ because Christ reconciled us to his father. Because he shed, he, he shed his blood and laid down his life. Because that was the will of his father. And he loved us as his father have loved us. May the Lord have a blessing unto the reading of his word. Lord, we glorify your holy name and we thank you for this uh, Sabbath day that we may fellowship in your word. Lord, I ask that you touch the hearts and minds of all those that this message falls upon, that this message may not fall upon deaf ears, but that it may reach the masses of your peoples for who it is meant for. For many are called and few are chosen. Lord, we bless your holy name and we thank you that your son is still making intercession on our behalf after he has already laid his life down for us, that he is the bishop of our souls. And that on him, all those that believe will have eternal salvation and life everlasting. Lord, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for all your messages. We thank you for all your signs. We thank you for all your wonders, Lord. We thank you for the daily bread that you give us, Lord. We take it not for granted, the time that we have with our loved ones. We bless your holy name and we thank you. We ask that you direct our path and straighten out our life, Lord. Straighten out all the the crookedness in our life that we may be on the narrow path. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our savior, be glory, power, dominion, and majesty, both now and forever. As the people of God say, amen.